which is why today we're going to be joined by a content creator. His name is Salem King, and he's going to be talking to us about content creation and creative storytelling. We know that social media has become a very thriving business. Lots of young people, young and old, are investing in social media, and we are going to be talking about how you can improve your social media game. Thank you so much for joining us, Salem. Thank you for having me, Oli. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so we're looking at um, content creation and creative storytelling. And these days, we see that content creation has become a very, very big deal. Let's talk about your own personal journey into content creation before we go into the meat of today's conversation. Yeah, um, so I started uh, putting out videos on Instagram, automatically just putting out uh, motivational videos. And uh, honestly, all I just wanted was a creative outlet for myself. And over time, I realized a lot of people wanted to see the kind of content I was creating. So I said, okay, this is not my favorite thing to do, but I'm good at it. And the people want more of it. So, okay, I'll give them more. And I just decided to do more and more of that over months. Uh, my account grew to from 1.5,000 to uh, 10,000 in just six months last year. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Wow. So, so you, could, you, you could attribute uh, the growth to the uh, kind of content or the t types of content you're putting out. You know, but a lot of people get uh, really, really overwhelmed by the process, seeing that, you know, you have to be consistent with the kind of things you put out, uh, the quality uh -huh. of what you put out. You have to study your, your, your followers to see what they like. You know, there's a lot in this whole process altogether. So as uh, someone who has probably conquered this part, what would you say were the actual steps you had to take to, to, you know, that actually got you to this point where you are now uh, regarding the content creation part? Well, I would say, first of all, it's important to start with what you're already passionate about, right? Um, and create content around what you're already spending the majority of your time and money on. So mm -hmm. everything I talk about in my videos is stuff that I have in conversations with my friends, is what I talk about if you catch me on the street or something. So it wasn't anything supernaturally new. So mm -hmm. if you're Thinking of going into content, don't think too far out of the box. Think of what am I already spending the majority of my time and money on and start to build stories around that. Your life is more interesting than you think it is if you decide that you want to make a story out of everything. Mm. All right. Um, Salem, we're going to be looking at the kind of content that you create. We know that you have a large interaction. You put out this post and people are shouting, preach, you know. They're always so excited by the comments and even the <laughs> engagement. But So let's take a look at the video, uh, an excerpt of or one of the videos that you've done. And when we come back, we'll continue the conversation with you. So by now, all of us at some point have said, man, when this is all over, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Truth is, some of us still aren't going to do sh**. Not because you're lazy or you don't want to be great in life, but because your goals are just too big. So when all of this is over, what you're going to realize is that you had a very unrealistic dream. So don't wait till then. Be honest with you now. Don't, don't set yourself up for auto disappointment and possible self hate Big goals are great to have, but it's a combination of teeny tiny steps that make big dreams possible. So that's why you should be setting your goals around. We're so addicted to the idea of the future. We mystify so much that we almost totally disregard the present actions that will lead us there. If you plan to hit the gym when this is over, you might want to start exercising for five minutes a day. Now, allow yourself to have big dreams. But remember that it's in the execution of small and seemingly ordinary goals that you get closer to your big dream. Not by dreaming, okay? So, big dreams, small goals. Big dreams, small goals. <laughs> I totally did not see how that video was going to end. Oh, wow. It was a nice twist to the Don't Rush Challenge. Now, is there any particular reason why you have stuck with white and black as your shoot that's like this is the first time we get to see you in color in in video. Version. we don't see you in color a lot <laughs> you know you stick to white and black and is there a reason you do that and how important is branding in terms of content creation because now when i see a white and black video i will think of you first hello salem are you so there with content creation okay yes i'm here okay. so with content creation um it's really important to Uh, I think we're having oh, a bit of network issue. That is so... Okay, okay I think we're back. back. Are we back? Salem, are you there? Yes. Okay, we're back. okay yes, take yes, that. I'm here. Uh, we had a bit of a um, network issue there. So let's uh, continue. Okay, so I was, as I was saying, branding is important, but mm -hmm. whatever you're branding yourself around as a content creator has to be something that is sustainable, right? So when I first started making videos, I was using a cheap phone. 
And after I would edit my videos, I didn't really like the quality. So I would just desaturate it and make it black and white to hide the flaws. So you couldn't see what my wall looked like. Mm -hmm. You couldn't see the flaws in the video. And that just worked for me at the time. So even when I got better equipment, it just stuck, you know. And it's really nice to have a consistent theme across all of your content. So when, once someone sees something black and white, you know, oh, that's Salem King's vibe. Uh, it just helped me stand out, you know, and I stuck with it. So if anybody wants the brand, it's important to brand around something you're comfortable with and that is sustainable over time. And I'm speaking about the content again. A lot of times, uh, because of what is trending and uh, what uh, people mm -hmm. around you are doing, people are forced to, um, you know, getting involved in trying to recreate what people are doing so that they can also, in that uh, Niger term of blue, because everybody wants blue. Yeah. So would you advise that, uh, you know, in content creation, you also need to um, uh, pay attention to what is, you know, the rave of the moment in order to, you know, plug in and see if you can uh, actually, you know, grow from there? Or is it advisable to create your own niche and try and build it from scratch and get people, you know, to like it? What would you advise? So um, trends, are, trends are just that. Trends are important. You can grow based on a trend, but the thing is trends are fickle, right? Um, it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. One thing that I believe that I hold very strongly is that the fact that the quality of your content will attract people, but it's your personality that will make them stay ultimately. So as mm -hmm. much as possible, whatever it is you're building has to be built around your person. Don't take the person, don't take the human side out of whatever it is you're doing. So there are content creators that when they don't post, people unfollow them and just go away because they were all about a trend. Mm. But the, people, the content creators that people connect with on a more personal level, even when they take a break or they're not posting, because the people are about them, not just content. People are now attached to their own story. It's their story they sold, not just a trend, right? Mm. No one else in the whole world has your own story. No one else has the combination of, you know, your experience, your interest, your past, everything that you have. You're the only person who has that combination. So that's what you should pull on when you're creating content or trying to tell your story, because that's what people hold on to and will never go away. But trends will definitely go away after some time. Mm. Now, speaking of storytelling, um, how important is it to, how, to be authentic? In the, the world that sort of thrives with, in a lot of, in, you know, on originality, if that's a word. There are lots of people who would rather stick to a picture that you paint rather than the actual person that you are. And there are many people who want to be authentic, who want to be original, but they're afraid that if they show the world who they really are, people would not Problem like the day. picture that they see. Mm. So how do you keep that balance, you know, that balance of still being yourself and not just jumping in with the trend of creating who you think people want you to be? Yeah, um, so I remind myself that everyone has problems. And, you know, no one, no one is as indifferent as they make it out to be. You know, nobody, you know, people say, oh, I don't care. I don't care. Nobody just doesn't care that much, right? Everybody has something in them that cares very deeply. And those are the things that I study and build content around, right? So I decide that this is my target audience. What are their problems? What, when they wake up in the morning, what are they worried about? And then I talk about those things. So the feedback I get a lot of times is, oh, my gosh, I needed to hear that. Um, I've been thinking this, but I needed to hear someone say it because everybody thinks I can't say this. And I'm like, that's exactly what I want to say. Since you guys are not comfortable, but you're going through it, right? So I think that's something everyone should focus on. Pull the string on a problem. It's very easy to reach out to people when you're focusing on problems that they have and when you're honest with them also about the fact that I have this problem too. You get so it's not. No one is immortal. No one is, you know, no one is invincible. We're all human together and that's that's my mantra when it comes to content and also you know in terms of creating content there are days when you're not in the mood mm. with content creation consistency is highly highly recommended but there are days when you're not in the mood yeah. or you're in the mood but you just don't have any inspiration you don't know what to talk about you don't know what to create how would you advise that people deal with this for writers writers who call it writer's block even though some people have said there's no such thing as writer's block but how do you deal with that space yeah. where your creativity is not flowing as it should? Uh, so it's true that it's true that um, you're you're not going to be at the same level of inspiration or creativity at every time. So when I have bursts of creativity or bursts of inspiration, I batch create, right? I create. I think about more than just one post. 
and create multiple ideas. I write down every one of my ideas. Like as we are in the middle of this interview, if I get an idea, I'm going to take out my notepad and write it down. Uh, and that's what I do when I'm in conversations. That's what I do when I'm walking on the street. Whatever I'm doing, I'm always writing down my ideas because I realize that a drought will come, right? So that's my way of like looking out for myself um, ahead of time. So when the drought comes, I have a bank to pull from because the world doesn't care that I am tired. My audience doesn't care that I am tired. I still have to put this out. It's my job. It's, it's work, right? So whether I feel like it or I don't feel like it, I need to show up. It's important that I show up. So that's my way of looking out for myself for the days when I'm not really in the mood or as inspired. Okay, now speaking about uh, the whole feedback expectation that content creators have, doing that, ah, if I post this video now, and go scatter the place. I don't, I don't yawn. There's a lot I said. And uh, you post the video okay. and yeah. the reaction not follow what you expect, you know. And uh, the ones that you least expect mm -hmm. are the ones who even get uh, the highest reactions, you know, and traction. So uh, in, as, a, as a creator now, do you, oh, do you have this kind of uh, situations with the things you create that the one that you feel that you have written all the game, game points uh, don't end up being the ones that get all the traction. <laughs> when that happens, how do you handle it? You know, it's, I'm sure as a creator, you must have gotten these kind of feelings in one time or the other. So how did you of go course. about it? Yeah. Um, so definitely, I've had times like that, and I think every creator has times like that. But it's not. I think everybody needs to recognize that it's not unique to creators. It's unique to being a human being right mm -hmm. it's unique to being an entrepreneur it's you anything you do you don't know which one will like take off right uh and a lot of creators don't need to hear this but creativity is a numbers game mm -hmm. and what that means is you could do your first video it's amazing the second one could be crap the third one could be amazing the fourth fifth six seven eight could be crap and you just have to keep going right sometimes you have to compare the first video you made to the 50th or 100th video you make to see progress, mm. right? It's time, it's small deposits of time over time. So the thing of, the thing of if, if, if you check out anybody who just blew through one video, except people who are the exception, they don't last very long. Mm -hmm. The people who last are people who last, who um, grew over time. You get? So they didn't just blow, but they grew into who they are now yeah. through consistent work. So. It's still small deposits of time over time. It applies to everything in life. It's not unique to creators. And how do you deal with performance addiction? We know that there are a lot of people who thrive on the likes and the comments. And your, your engagement is insane. You see, you put out a post and in an hour or so, you're having hundreds of comments. People like what you dish out. And with time, it's, it's easy to get addicted to this, such that when it doesn't come the way that you expect, mm. you feel a certain sense of disappointment, mm. which is why Instagram and some other social media platforms have started hiding likes and views, so you don't yeah. have to compare yourself mm. with another person's work. Like, I personally can't see likes, you know, but um, I don't know how you're able to deal with performance addiction and what you'd have yes. to say to people who are also dealing with it. Hmm. So, um, with that, yes, I have definitely dealt with that. I'd be lying if, if I said I hadn't. Um, but I think everybody just needs to remember that it's a vicious cycle that doesn't end. So you never get to a point where, oh, I have 100k followers now. I'm good. Um, how I knew for the first time is, you know, I, I was looking, I was looking forward to having 10,000 followers so bad, and then the day I got 10,000 followers, I felt nothing, right? And I was looking forward to 20k followers. I got 20k. I felt nothing. So I realized. This thing is just going to go ahead like this. Even on the day when I have one million, I'm going to feel nothing, right? So I had to, so now I focus on why I do what I do. Um, and I remind myself, I'm in the business of people. I'm trying to build people. I'm trying to help creators find clarity and advance faster. So I'm focusing on everything that I'm doing outside of Instagram. Instagram is important to me, but my classes are even more important to me. My clients are even more important to me. So I, remind, I constantly remind myself, this is why you do what you do. Instagram is a platform for you to do what you do. It's not your life, right? And every now and then, I take breaks. Every now and then, every couple months, I disappear for two weeks. No Instagram, no Twitter, you know, to just refuel and, you know, remind myself that I'm a human being before I am an influencer exactly. or a content creator. <laughs> That's, so, yeah. Speaking about uh, that disappearing, you said <laughs> a lot of uh, content creators get scared to embark on that holiday or that taking that break because they feel that they're going to lose 
the uh, followers or lose the interest of people because like you said it's a it's a thing of numbers and and your 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 fans don't want to know if you're sick they don't want to know if uh, yeah. there's no lights in your house to record they won't be say oh god just give us content make we they see so uh, a lot of uh, creators battle with this uh, idea of okay let's take a break for some time to let me go and you know refresh my memory or refresh my skill and because that's why they are, then they, they 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 are stuck on the idea of creating 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 and sometimes yeah. it affects the quality of what they create now uh yeah. is it is, is it is it a standard uh, uh, ad, uh, procedure to always take breaks or is it does it just work you know with uh, particular individuals um so I, I, I have set up my brand in such a way that I can afford to take breaks, right? So with the kind of content I put out, I have, I have made my followers to understand that you people are going to allow me to be human, right? When, I am, when I'm at my strongest point, I'm going to give you quality value, mm -hmm. but you are going to allow me to be human. You're not going to make a celebrity out of me to the point where I cannot take a break when I need to take a break for my mental health and well-being. Yeah. So I think that's something every creator needs to do for themselves. I, I think we, we sell too much of an aspirational life to the point where you want people to see you as this God, like they want to become you. You know, That's the image you put out there. Yeah. So you, you don't even have permission yourself to be a human being. So mm. as much as it's important to be consistent, I, you know, I give other people, I advise other creators to take breaks. Sometimes people ask me questions on Instagram and I tell them, what you need is a break, like take some time off, you know, which sounds counterintuitive. It's not yeah. something that I should be telling you, but I know that you're a human being first. And if anything happens to you or your mental health, this work that you're trying to hold on to so bad, it, it will not exist. You won't have it anymore because mm -hmm. there's no even you to begin with. Mm -hmm. So right. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's a standard of just something that I strongly advise. Hmm. I think it's a very good advice. Even those who are of faith will say that on the seventh day, God rest. God rest. God will rest. Who are you not to exactly. rest? Exactly. It's important <laughs> that you take those breaks. Now, you recently put up a post where you showed us the bloopers, the behind the scenes of what it takes to get that one minute perfect video. Give us, you know, from where you start, what does it take to actually shoot a one minute video? People see the finished product, but we don't see the behind the scenes a lot. Take us on a journey <laughs> to the behind the scenes. Okay, um, first of all, it takes my whole life to write a script because a script is born out of all the experiences I've had from uh, growing up to where I am right now, right? To write a script. And then creating the video in itself, filming takes around, I do about, I make around, around 30 to 50 clips for a one minute video. And then mm -hmm. I stitch them together in editing. Uh, editing takes two to three hours for a one minute video. After I post, it takes another couple hours to reply comments, reply DMs, and all of that. Wow. It's actually a lot of work, but I don't, I don't like to make noise about it because mm. I enjoy it. Um, and I mean, I, I enjoy the results. I see, you know, the change that happens in people as a result of just 60 seconds. Um, mm. And that, that just fills my heart with joy. That's really fulfilling that so much can happen. So my mantra is, my mindset rather is I want to offer as much valuable information as possible within the shortest time possible. So that's why my videos are one minute. Sometimes I have to cut out stuff. I write a script, then I start to simplify it. That's like my creative process. Sometimes I have to cut some things out of the script to make sure it's clear, it's not too all over the place or complicated, it's still easy to understand, still portable, still relatable, still easily applicable. So yeah, that's, that's pretty what it is. Amazing. You know, they say that you should do what you love so you'd never have to work a day in your life. Final words, Salem, for people who are new to social media, because there are many people in this season that are moving their business to the social media space and are trying to build a brand who had zero, because a lot of what you said would work for, yes, new, and but most especially those who have been on social media. For those who are, who are just starting, they're like babies in the social media space, what advice would you give to them? Hmm. So I would say uh, don't, don't, don't come on social media with, the mindset of, oh, I, I hear these kids are making money off of social media now. I hear the same thing. Let me jump into it too. Uh, that's, 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 very limit. that's a very limiting mindset. I think you should think about it as what problems do I seek to solve in the world and how can social media help me solve them more creatively? What does my business do? How can social media help me scale? How can social media help me reach more people with this solution that I have created? So social media is not going to make a bad business good. Social media is not going to suddenly make an unsuccessful business successful, right? It's just, it's a catalyst. It's a platform for what you already built, for the problem you already solved. 
to look at it that way. Think if you, if you don't already have a problem, you want to solve, think about it like this. Oh, I want to solve a problem. Because social media is so saturated, right? If, if you're not solving an actual problem, you will get lost in the crowd. No one will even notice. Um, so think about what problems you want to solve and just start with what you have. As you go on, you'll figure it out. You'll understand what you need to do next um, as, you, as you go. And be more about you know, offering value solving problems. So don't just say, oh, how do I build my followers? How do I increase my engagement? Rather say, how do I solve more problems? How do I help people advance faster? As you do that, growth is going to be a byproduct. It's just unavoidable. As you offer value and solve problems, you will grow. Your business will grow. Your content will spread. So yeah, that's my advice, my two cents. Thank you, Salem. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Salem, for this conversation. It was quite insightful because uh, in this recent time where a lot of people are on social media, a lot of people are thinking of what to create, a lot of people are, are bored and they want to jump on social media to start that habit of creating stuff. I think this was a very good conversation on, on the direction they should take. Thank you very much, Salem Thank King, you. for joining Thank us. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much.